Hydroponics fodder farming has not been a smooth ride on our farm. In last week's video, I demonstrated how it has been for us to the point of wondering, is it a scam? Well, it's definitely not a scam, even if it feels like it. But it led me to my next very important question. Is it worth it? At the end of that video, I began an experiment soaking the wheat and barley grains in water mixed with apple cider vinegar. I had asked you for any other suggestions for a solution to the mold and I received two, hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. I especially liked the idea of white vinegar for it's much more affordable than apple cider vinegar. Thanks for that feedback. But before I go very far, I just first of all want to make a disclaimer that I am not an agronomist or you know a professional scientist in the line of agriculture, but I'm just sharing my personal experiences in the most authentic way that I can um, about our farming journey. Okay, yeah, so uh, all the opinions that I share here uh, are personal opinions and so take it that way. So my name is Florence Wamboi or Ketch and that's what I do on this channel. That's what we do here uh, at Oak Farm. We share our learning experiences as new farmers, as learning farmers. And if you enjoy farming or outdoor homestead activities, then this is the place for you. Feel at home, welcome, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And I just want to say a big, big, big huge welcome to our new subscribers thank you for subscribing to this channel and i'm sure um, you'll gain value from what you'll get here we're so happy to have you here at oak farm where every day here at the farm is a learning day so today in this video i'll show you the results of that little experiment that i had mentioned earlier in the video i'll also share the pros and cons we have observed about hydroponics fodder farming and i'll also share um, the way forward for our farm oak farm um, as concerns hydroponics fodder farming so let's get right into it The pros of hydroponics fodder farming include 1. The structure for the hydroponics fodder farming can be made simply and affordably using locally available materials. 2. The time for growing the plants is very minimal and so produces feed quickly. 3. The process is fairly easy to do and does not require too much technical expertise. 4. The feed is versatile and can be fed to a variety of livestock, including cows, goats, pigs, ducks, and even rabbits. The cons of hydroponics fodder farming that we observed include 1. It is very sensitive and susceptible to mildew and mold. 2. It requires one's ability to consistently water the plants on time. This can make it tricky if you're not uh, present full time to attend to them. And three, it can be expensive to sustain if one is to continually use vinegar to prevent mold and other this fungi. Is the moment of truth. Let's see. This one totally has mold. You can see. Not as bad as the first one, but it's bad. Yeah, this is the barley. Let's look at the second one. Still does have mold, you can see. But it's better than the first time. Let us look at the wheats. 
Wow. This is almost good, but you can see it still does have some mold. Oh my goodness. I thought we'd make it in this one. But no. You can see how this looks. Oh my goodness. And this is the last one. Let's see. At the bottom it has really tried. Still has some element of mold. Yeah. Can see this? Yeah. So the bottom is not bad. Not that bad. But it still does have some mold as well. I don't know if you can see that. You can see. Yeah. But look at the ones that fell. It's something that I can easily remove. Look at these ones. That grew here with the seedlings. It's for those reasons, therefore, that here uh, at Oak Farm, we've decided to put a pause on hydroponics for the farming. Um, not because it's it can't work, but just because it's not working for us um, at the moment. Um, we've tried, but we realize that it's just not working yet. Um, we definitely need to visit a farm where um, it's been working for them over time and you know borrow, borrow a leaf from them um, yeah so for now it's a pause not to say that we'll never do it again but uh, not at the moment we've not been able to produce a harvest you know without um, any mold and so we end up wasting all the harvest that we make um, and so yeah it's becoming quite wasteful moreover with the nature of our farming right now which is part-time um, you know we do it early in the morning and late in the evening we are not able to water you know the crop the seeds um, in the best within the best time frames and so yeah that's um, maybe part of the reason why it's not working they grew well but the main challenge here for us is the mold yeah after doing some research um, I wondered whether uh, these three reasons are part of why we consistently got mold on our crop first of all we used gunny bags um, gunias that uh, we were reusing they had come with animal feed and so we, we used them to soak the grain so later on when I was doing my research um, you know they talk about very hygienic conditions so I wondered yes the gunias looked clean the gunny bags looked clean but I wondered were there maybe particles that we couldn't see but resulted in the mold um, secondly I also had something about you know watering only with fresh water which we did for um, a large part of our project um, where we live we have saline water but luckily we did have rainwater a lot in plenty at that time and so we did use fresh water but a few times we'd water with saline water so I'm not sure if that also contributed to the mold as I have mentioned also sometimes we just have to water at night if you know we arrived home 
uh, a bit late so we just had to do that and i do know if that also affected um you know the growth of molds in our crop so here at our farm we are trying to uh, find out and to work out the most cost effective ways and the most efficient ways uh, you know to feed our animals and get the best out of them and so it's been a long journey getting there it's been a long journey and the journey is still long you know uh, but we are trying to take each step at a time and so yeah that's why in next week's video i'll share about what we have been feeding our animals on what we actually feed our dairy goats on um even before we started you know the hydroponics fodder farming and uh, trying the sorghum so i'll let you know what exactly we have been feeding them on so make sure you join me in that video i hope that you have found value in today's video um i believe you have and if you have please be sure to give us a, a big like i uh, will really appreciate it because um, it really adds value to the channel and to this video so that many more can see it and if you haven't yet be sure to subscribe to the channel and join this family so that we can learn together and you'll always get updates whenever we upload a new video i really love to hear from you um, your thoughts on you know whatever we talked about and if you have any other questions for us be sure to write them down in the comment section below so thank you so much for staying with me up to this time and till next time bye bye hi there once again um interestingly that was truly meant to be the end of that video but just after i had done it um i just got some feedback from you guys which i'm so grateful for and some of you were suggesting what i can do to actually deal with this mold and one of the suggestions um actually two people suggested that uh, i soak the grains in bleach um before uh, sowing them on the trays and also to check on the holes on the trays uh, preferably use flat trays so at the moment i really don't have flat trays i have those with ridges so i'll just have to make do with them but maybe check on the holes if they were done right so yeah anyway i thought about it and i thought what really do i have to lose since i have the grains i have bleach and that advice sounded very practical for me and very easy to actually you know actualize so i decided yeah why not give it one more shot and see how it goes yeah so actually i'll try again another time and this time i'll wash the trays with a bleach solution um i'll also soak the grains in bleach uh one of you suggested for about three hours and then rinse them uh with pure with clean water after that which is what i'll do um and also i'll do my best this time to water them during the day when it's daylight uh, when there's daylight not at night and let's see how it goes so i really hope for the best this time and if it works out you guys you have made me get back on this one thank you so i really appreciate your feedback actually yes i did know that um jig or bleach actually deals with mold and in the second uh, instance i tried to irrigate the uh, the grains with a uh, bleach solution just a little bit of bleach but uh, i realized that i think it dried out the seeds if i'm not wrong if if, if that is what caused them to dry out um so yeah yeah though i was late to plant those particular seeds so either the bleach or the late planting but um anyway this time i'll do my best to do it uh the best i can yeah and i hope it works yeah i hope it works if it works i know our goats will be really really happy to eat you know fresh fodder so till the next video see you